What is up, guys? Welcome to quarterfinals of the National Pokeball League, the NPL. This time, we are taking on Greg. Our, uh, I would say uh, he's uh, he's kind of a rival at this point because we haven't beaten him yet in draft league for format. Um, we took him on in the GBA D League and we lost because we choked the game away. And we took him on earlier this season and we lost to him then again as well uh, because we thought Como's uh, bulletproof blocked bullet punch. So this time around, I'm not making the same mistake. Greg has made a few modifications to his team since we last played. As you can see, there is now a Raikou there as well as a, uh, a Barbarical at the bottom. Uh, I don't think Swallow was there either initially. I could be wrong though. But uh, mainly his team hasn't changed too much. He still has the Lando Zardex core with the Scizor, the Rotom Wash, uh, the Raikou, as I mentioned, Celebi Gardevoir is two Psychics, Swallow, Lolan Raticate, Toxicroak, which I know he loves to bring, as well as the newly acquired Barbarical, uh, which is also one of his Zemons, so I have to be very, very careful about that thing. So, looking at this matchup, uh, and after having gone through a few mocks, I noticed that there were some serious threats to my team. Mainly, uh, Gardevoir and Celebi have a really good matchup against me because they don't really care about anything that my team can do and they can spam their psychic moves pretty freely unless i bring either my houndoom or silvali dark or steel uh because psychic is pretty easily shot off against my team i do have two psychic types of my own but gardevoir's moonblast is also very scary and it causes a prediction game if i don't decide to bring silvali steel uh and uh, because it destroys houndoom destroys durant uh, all of those guys. Uh, so I have to very much watch out for Gardevoir and I have to plan in consequence to it. Uh, Scarf Guard is definitely something that I could see coming. Uh, last time he brought a Trick Room Memento variant, uh, which I know he's loved to bring this season. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that I'm minus speed on my Amoongus is to try to take care of his uh, his Trick Room. Uh, we're going to get into the Mons in a second. Uh, a few things that um, I noticed about my team. AV Houndoom actually does decently in this matchup because uh, it has the speed tier to put pressure on on uh, Lando T and Zardex, uh, because Zardex is probably not coming max speed, uh, deals with the Scizor, gets huge chunks off of things like the Rotom Wash and the Raikou, and hits the Celebi and Gardevoir both super effectively if I decide to run um, Sludge Bomb and uh, as, well, as well as Dark Pulse. So I saw that that could do a little bit of work to his team. I tested it out, tested it out in a few mocks, and I ultimately decided to drop it. And uh, you guys are going to see for what in a second. But let's start up on the team. We have Dehuan Amoongus coming this time. I am very scared of his Scizor, uh, and I watched Geo versus uh, MV in uh, in the GBA in quarterfinals. There, I saw that MV brought this a very similar set to this, if not exactly this. Uh, max HP, max defense, Rocky Helmet. Um, the only thing that this doesn't stop from Scizor is plus two Life Orb Adamant Bug Bite. It's a roll, and after rocks, it's guaranteed. So I have to be very, very careful with that. If I see a Life Orb on Scizor, I'm going to have to play differently around it, I guess you could say. Uh, i got to keep my Como healthy, which you guys are going to see at the end of the team builder. Uh, but any other set, and this pretty much checks it, uh, HP Fire, other than Aka Berry, destroys Foul Play. If he is Aukaberry, it means he's not a boosting item, so even if he gets up to plus two uh, as I switch in, or while I'm in, uh, then I can foul play on the following turn, for example. Spore is also an option, and Sludge Bomb is there to hit his Psychics, uh, Celebi and Gardevoir, because they both take super effective from Sludge Bomb. Also hits the Zardex for some good damage, uh, as well as the, the Rotom Wash, the Raikou, and his, uh, his Raticate, Swallow, things like that. Uh, anything that doesn't resist it, essentially. Uh, anything but Lando. Uh, but most of the things that end up resisting my uh, my Sludge Bomb take uh, a good amount of damage from Foul Play as well, because uh, his physical attackers are very, very strong. So that's uh, we had the same sort of concept with our Sneasel back when we played uh, in week four, I want to say three or four. Uh, I think it was three. But yeah, anyway, uh, Moonga's pretty straightforward. It's just there to check Sizz. That's really all it's there for. Uh, emergency check to, I guess, a choice locked Lando T into Earthquake. Uh, if I need to sport it, for example, uh, anything like that. And it can take on Raikou decently well, as well as long as, long as it's not sub call mine, something like that. So yeah, uh, that's uh, that's Moonga's moving on. Uh, the one that I decided to sub in for Houndoom, my AV Houndoom, was Lyra. Uh, choice specs, Lyra, the uh, the Meloetta. So I have Hyper Voice, Psychic, Shadow Ball, and HP Fire. I have 204 Sp Attack uh, with a 228 uh, investment in speed as well as a Timid Nature. This makes sure that I outspeed uh, Adam and Zardex as well as uh, Modest Celebi. 
uh, and I outspeed his Gardevoir, his Raticate, the Toxicroak, uh, Barbarical before Shell Smash, uh, anything but Jolly Max Speed Lando, uh, Scizor at Max Speed, Rotom at Max Speed as well, because that hits 298, uh, and uh, pretty much a lot of his team uh, I outspeed, and uh, Hyper Voice hits ridiculously hard. Choice Specs Hyper Voice hits so, so hard. Scizor is 2 hit KO'd after rocks. Uh, if it's not if it's not very heavily invested in HP, uh, I also I'm packing HP fire as an emergency measure. I have 76 in defense rather than HP because I felt like taking a bullet punch from Scissor was a little more important than uh, taking minimal damage from Gardevoir and Celebi on the switch. The reason that I decided to bring this over Houndoom was because it is a good enough switch into his psychics to where his team can't switch into me after. And if his guard is scarfed, I find that out very quickly because he'll end up outspeeding me. So that's going to be very nice. Choice Specs Shadow Ball, Guard of War does not appreciate. So uh, there's that. Uh, Psychic is also very nice for the Toxicroak uh, in case he, I don't know, decides to uh, to be AV uh, and he can take a Hyper Voice. Psychic is nice for knocking that thing out. Uh, it's just a good lock-in move late game if his Psychics are already gone and if he doesn't bring Raticate, for example, uh, because Psychic... Uh, I mean, Hyper Voice is obviously better, but uh, anyway, Shadow Ball, and uh, then we got HP Fire, like I said, uh, Serene Grace. Uh, the 204, I believe, was to make sure that I could 2-hit KO the Sizz on the Switch uh, after Rocks. I didn't need any more than that, because his team is already molly -whopped by this thing. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's Lyra. It's a good uh, it's a good pivot into his Psychics. Moving on, we have another choice, Thmon, on the team, Mad, our Diggersby. So, uh, I decided to bring uh, Choice Scarfed, because... Uh, I needed the speed on, like, over his Celebi uh, and his Gardevoir, if they're not choice locked, uh, as well as his Rotom Wash, uh, which does not want to switch into uh, Return at all. And I felt like Return could really pressure his team. Whenever I get a free switch into this thing, as so long as he doesn't bring in Scizor, Return pretty much to it KOs everything outside of a defensive Lando T. So, uh, I, I'm in a very, very, very good position with this thing if I get it in for free. Uh, I do have one form of pivoting. I might have tr wanted to consider U-Turn on Meloetta over, um, over Psychic, but ultimately I felt like, um, clicking U-Turn could be detrimental to me in the sense that if he decides to stay in with one of the two Psychics that I'm, that I'm switching into initially, uh, then I have to take a hit. Uh, on something else, so I, I didn't feel like U-Turn was merited, but anyway, we have U-Turn on this, obviously, because it hits Celebi extremely hard. Uh, I decided to outspeed, uh, what was it, Max Speed Raikou with a Scarf, uh, and I'm also covering his, uh, his Speed Creeps of his own Raikou. So that's what the 244 is there for, uh, max attack adamant and 48 HP. I have quick attack because in a lot of mocks, I noticed that I was able to get Zard down to about 17% uh, after it had dragon danced, but I had no measure of being able to revenge it. And I decided to bring quick attack on this and another move on Amon that you guys are going to see later as emergency checks to a plus one Zard X because Zard can set up on me. So I need to be very careful with that. Uh, Earthquake is obviously really good to spam against this team once the Lando T and or the Rotom are gone. Um, and the Swallow, of course. Uh, Celebi obviously doesn't take a huge hit, but uh, if I need to lock myself into Earthquake, for example, for uh, Toxicroak, Barbarical, like if it's a better move to lock myself into, then I'll go for it. Uh, and U-turn and quick attack we already explained, so that's that. Moving on, we have Terror, uh, of course, coming. I don't think there's a week that it hasn't come. We have our Mega Aerodactyl here. Uh, Ice Fang, Toxic, Roost, and Earthquake. This might actually be, uh, it's not exactly the same set that I ran for him the first time, but it's very, very similar. I decided to run Earthquake this time because of the Raikou. Uh, I had Earthquake last time because of the Stack Attacka. Uh, but, uh, I decided to outspeed the Raikou once I'm Mega, I'm actually going to change this to Mega, uh, ignore the white part back there, uh, we'll do Mega here, so you guys can actually see the real speed. We have 362, uh, I'm running 96 Adamant to be able to 2-hit two, uh, KO Lando after rocks if it's Yachi Berry, I still knock it out, uh, and then, uh, we have 80 HP and a lot of defense because I want to be able to take Zardex's hits. Uh, essentially what I made sure that I could do is uh, take just under 55% from uh, Max Atta Dragon Claw uh, so that I could roost it off and Toxic stall him because I do have Toxic on this thing. Uh, so long as he doesn't immediately go for a Dragon Claw 
Or if even if he does and gets a low roll at some point, I'll be able to Toxic his Zard. I'll be able to keep this thing healthy and just kind of roost stall it. Uh, Toxic is also there for the, the obvious Rotom Wash and Celebi switch-ins. Celebi doesn't come in as easily because I do have Ice Fang, although it can Giga Drain a lot back and Natural Cure the, the poison off. He has to play really dilig diligently around uh, Arrow if he do if he br decides to bring Celebi as a check to Arrow, which I did see in one of my mocks. Uh, Shoutouts Ice. Um, and I felt like Earthquake was a good thing to have in case of his Toxicroak wanting to set up on me. I don't want to be full setup fodder for his Toxicroak. While I could run Stone Edge because it does do good damage to the Raikou, as well as hits the Rotom, which obviously the set cannot hit and I'm forced out on, uh, I do have an Amoogus. So I'm not as worried about his Rotom Wash. As far as his Toxicroak goes, I feel like Meloetta, uh, being that it has really good speed F, uh, isn't going to take too much from a plus two Vacuum Wave if he decides to run Nasty Plot. Uh, and I outspeed anything, anything but Scarf. So as long as I keep Meloetta around, I'm pretty much good to go. So that's fine. Uh, and the next mod on my team also covers his Toxicroak to a certain extent, which is uh, Captain Crunch, our Coco. As you can see, we're bringing Scarfed Diggersby and Scarfed Coco, both with U-Turn. Uh, I decided to bring this because, as you can see, the fourth move on this mod is Mirror Move. And there were some situations where I felt like going into Coco and going for Mirror Move were better than going into Diggersby and clicking Quick Attack in the situation where, for example, he has a Barbarical, right? So uh, I think it's better to to go into Coco, click Mirror Move. He knows I'm Scarf, so he's going to click Shell Smash one way or another. Uh, but I can bring back in Coco, and the fact that I'm Scarf might... Uh, might force him to not click uh, to, to click shell smash again on something that uh can cl kill him if he clicks shell smash again essentially uh is my thought process there uh wild charge obviously hits his team extremely hard outside of celebi and the zardex lando t uh everything else takes really really good damage including raikou uh and then we have hp ice because uh if he decides to run a rock polish lando t but only decides to outspeed like a scarfed uh, Diggersby or Scarfed Meloetta, for example, uh, then I can... He's not going to only outspeed Scarfed Diggersby because that wouldn't outspeed Arrow, uh, but if he decides to have outspeed, let's say, Scarfed Houndoom, Scarfed Meloetta, I can outspeed that if he's Rock Polish. So, uh, HP Ice covers that, and then, uh, Wild Charge. Uh, actually, I don't know if my Scarf covers that. Uh, no, never mind. Rock Polish would absolutely destroy me. Um, but anyway, uh, like Scarf Lando, I can kill with that HP Ice. That's always an emergency move to click uh, near the end of the game. But Wild Charge is what I'm going to be locking myself into most often. So there's that. Uh, moving on, last mon on the squad is going to be C Major, our Como. Now... Last time we messed up with Como, uh, we thought that Bulletproof blocked Bullet Punch. This time I'm not making the same mistake. Uh, I decided to bring Soundproof instead, and I'm going to explain my reasoning here. While I could just slap on any ability, he has a Trace Mon in Gardevoir. And what I don't want happening is his Gardevoir tracing my, um, my uh, Bulletproof as I switch into Amoongus on a Predicted Trick Room, for example, or Moonblast, and then him completely blocking my Sludge Bomb. That's really, really bad. Now... Um, actually, I'll explain it during the game, but anyway, uh, we have a Bonberry, uh, I'm essentially, I'm, I am able to switch into Zardex. I am able to literally switch into Zardex when it comes in for free, because even if he goes for D-Claw, D-Claw into D-Claw doesn't actually knock me out unless he's adamant and he gets two very high rolls, uh, and Clang Scales absolutely destroys him. If he's not max bulk, then he gets, uh, O-Code. If he has a lot of bulk, then he's put into range of Quick Attack, uh, and or mirror move, obviously, because he has to click Dragon Claw against me. So mirror move is going to be very nice for the uh, the Zard uh, from Coco because of this mon right here. Because he absolutely he, he cannot click a fire move against this. He's going to get blown back. Uh, Flamethrower is there if I'm able to keep this thing healthy enough during the game. Uh, I can click that on Scizor. Stealth Rocks are uh, going to be very helpful against his team, as you can see. Uh, he has a lot of things that don't appreciate rocks. Zard before before and after Mega Evolving. Uh, Rotom taking chip, not allowing it to, to potentially live a, a two-shot from uh, Diggersby's return. Uh, Scizor getting chipped, helping out Amoongus, being able to kill it. Uh, his uh, Celebi as well, being able to chip that. His Gardevoir, which has no recovery uh, outside of Wish. His Swellow, that's going to be a very nice thing to chip down. And everything else, breaking sashes on things like Toxicroak and Barbarical are, is always nice. 
nice. Uh, and also putting Raticate in range of Specs uh, Hyper Voice. Uh, I did Oko an Alolan Raticate at some point with Specs Hyper Voice from Meloetta, so there's that. Uh, and the final move on there is Protect. And the reason I, I decided to bring Protect, uh, this is something I used to tech on a lot and I don't do it as often, but I think in this situation it's very much uh, warranted, is the fact that he has a Gardevoir. And if he decides to bring a Choice, uh, I have an Amoongus. If he locks into Psychic, I can switch into Lyra uh, or Meloetta. So that's pretty much nullified right there. That doesn't do a lot of damage because obviously Meloetta's Spadef is amazing. And if he decides to lock into Moonblast, I can switch into Amoongus very safely uh, and either get off a Spore, throw out a Foul Play, whatever I want to do on the following turn. So if I, I recognize that his uh, Gardevoir is, is Choiced, uh, Specs or Scarfed, then I can click Protect. Uh, at any point in the game when he decides to bring it in, if he decides that it's a free switch in for his guard, I can click protect, scout its move, and then switch into the appropriate mana as a result. So, uh, I think I have all bases covered. I'm pretty convinced that I can deal with the majority of his team, considering how many choice items I have. I decided to go very offensive this game, as opposed to my typical, like, switching routines. I do have momentum on the team with U-Turn, uh, but I don't have, like, any recovery outside of uh, Arrow's Roost. Like... Uh, nothing and maybe regen. Uh, nothing's carrying leftovers. I have three choice items. Uh, Roost is the only recovery move I'm running. I'm not even running Giga Drain on this thing. So, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's scary for me because it's not how I typically like to play with my uh, my defensive core. Uh, but I think this is a much more efficient way to play against Greg. So. That being said, we are about to jump into the battle. Um, what I'm predicting Greg to bring is Lando T, Zardex, Scizor, Rotomwash, Celebi, and Gardevoir. Those are the six that I'm expecting. I do not expect Raikou because Raikou has a lot of checks. Uh, it doesn't like Diggersby coming in on it because then th that's a free return. Uh, it doesn't like um, a lot of things on my team. Anyway, uh, it knows that uh, Arrow outspeeds it. If a choice locks itself, then it's screwed against Diggersby and Amoongus. So Raikou's probably not coming. Uh, Swallow could come, but it has to fear Arrow and it also has to fear Coco. Uh, and then there's, uh, like, in general, people don't like bringing their flying types against me. We know this from this season. Uh, Raticate, um, definitely a possibility, but very unlikely because my psychics, uh, are usually utility anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Toxicroak could be a bring. Uh, I expect Toxicroak, actually, if, uh, either of the psychics don't come. Barbarical is also an option, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much what I expect. Now, this is a very long team builder, obviously. Uh, this is uh, the quarterfinals, though, so we do have to uh, go extensively into the, the building process here. Uh, now, let's get into the replay. Let's go and see. So, as you can see, guys, um, I have the wrong layout, don't I? I'm about to change that. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, last second editing here. We're going to go and grab uh, our quarters layout and put it over. There we go. So, as you can see, we're 8 and 2 plus 19. Greg is 5 and 5 minus 1. So, uh, Greg decided to bring, I see Barbarical right away, and I'm like, <laughs> he, he did bring it. Okay, it's a good thing I have Scarf Coco, because that, that checks Shell Smash uh, Barbarical if he's not Max Jolly, I believe. Uh, I do outspeed him. And then, actually, I think I outsped Max Jolly as well. I think that's why I went to 386 and not just 384 with, uh, with beating Swellow. Uh, and then he has Zard, Gardevoir, um, the Lando, the Rotom, and the Scizor. So, uh, five out of six. Pre predicted correctly so looking at this team i'm like okay i think i, I th i'm pretty sure i can deal with this uh so i'm looking at the lead matchup and i'm thinking okay uh ever since i popped uh my scarfed coco onto the team i've really liked leading with it because it gives me a lot of information on his team um and it, it just gets an immediate volt switch out with pretty much no consequence unless he decides to leave scissor but then i could just hard switch into my amoongus so that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to lead off with coco as he is going to lead off with his zard and i'm going to click u-turn he mega evolves i get this u-turn off and i'm gonna whoa, whoa, whoa back it up okay uh i'm going to get the u-turn off right here and you guys are going to see that it does 7. On on my uh, on the actual uh, like chat log, it does 7.2. I plug in max HP, max defense, not impish, just max HP, max defense into the calc. And I see that uh, you turn from Coco, my spread, does 7.2 min. So I'm thinking, okay, this thing is probably slightly speed invested. It's got max HP or max defense. Uh, and it has an impish nature. Uh, whatever he's not that, that he doesn't have in speed, he has in either. Uh, he's missing 
Whatever he has in speed, he's missing in either HP or in, in his defense, but I know that he's probably not attack invested. I also know that because he's a defensive set, he's probably going to be going for a, uh, a Will-O-Wisp on this turn. So what I'm going to decide to do is U-turn into my Como. You guys might have seen it before. Uh, he's going to go for the Will-O-Wisp. I'm going to get burned. I don't care. I have only special attacks. So I'm immediately going to go for the Clanging Scales right here as he decides. Actually, I, might, I think I might have gone for Rocks. I did go for Rocks. Okay. Because of the fact that I brought in uh, Como directly, and uh, we are playing on regular Showdown, uh, and Greg was kind of tipped off of the fact that I could bring Clanging Scales on Como, uh, because of the fact that, uh, actually, uh, Jolt notified us in the server that we had to play on regular Showdown because Clanging Scales has a glitch on Battle Area where it doesn't give you the defense drop. I'm the one that told Jolt to notify us of that, because I didn't want to make it obvious that I was bringing Clanging Scales and just straight up tell Greg, look, we need to play on regular Showdown, so I told Jolt, Jolt to at us, uh, to ping us in the server. Uh, and I think that might have actually played a little bit of a role in this in this turn right here. I'm able to go for rocks, knowing that Greg might switch because of the fear of clanging scales. So and that and the fact that I still have my Habanberry and he has no attack investment probably on his Zard. So I can probably still take two uh, Dragon Claws from where I'm at, even with burn. So I'm gonna go for rocks. He brings in his Gardevoir. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna actually uh, stay in here and go for the protect uh, to scout what he's gonna go for, and he ends up going into his Lando. So I see Lando. I'm like, okay, this is fine. I can just go into Aerodactyl. I am quite bulky. He goes for rocks. So I see rocks, and I'm I'm thinking. I don't know what he is. Uh, he could very well be Z Stone Edge, uh, but what I'm going to prioritize is going for Toxic here. If he uses up his Z move on my Aerodactyl, that's fine because I already know that his Zard is defensive, which means that Meloetta outspeeds it. And that's something that's very important is that Meloetta outspeeds Zard. So, uh, and there's also a very low likelihood that he's running uh, Dragon Dance because he would need to be Dragon Dance, Will O Wisp, Roost, and then one attack. And if he's not Dragon, then he can't hit my arrow. If he's not fire, then he can't, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, if he's not dragon, then he can't hit arrow. If he's fire, uh, then he can't hit, uh, my, my Como. So, uh, that being said, I'm going to throw out a toxic right here. I'm going to get it off on the Rotom. This Rotom is going to take 6%. I don't see leftovers on that turn, which is very nice. Uh, I know that thing, this thing is for either carrying a berry, something like that. So I'm going to switch out here, and I'm going to go into Moongus, knowing that it's a pretty safe switch in. He's going to go for the Will-O-Wisp. Uh, he gets off another burn on my team. He got one off on Como. Now he has one off on Amoongus. Now, the only bad thing here is I actually prefer the burn on Como rather than Amoongus because Amoongus has foul play. And the fact that I no longer have access to a strong foul play is actually very, very scary because it means that if his Scizor is, in fact, Akaberry, uh, I'm in for a very, very rough ride. So uh, I'm just going to go throw out a Spore here because it looks pretty free. He's kind of forced to Volt Switch at this point. He's going to bring in his Zard, and now his Zard's asleep as I go for a Spore. Which also gives me a free switch on this turn, which is going to be very, very nice. As he's forced to switch out as well, he goes into his Lando. And I'm going to go into my Diggersby, uh, and I am Scarfed. So, uh, right here I'm going to scout for information, and I'm going to go for U-Turn. And he actually goes for U-Turn first, so that reveals to me that his Lando is Scarfed as well. So this is very good information, it means that it has to lock itself into a move at any given point in the game. He's going to go into his Zardex, I'm going to get off a U-turn right here, and uh, I'm going to get in my Como. Now, I want to say this is probably a misplay, um, just because of the fact that, uh, well, I know he's sacking Zard, so I can click uh, Clanging Scales pretty freely, but Meloetta was also pretty free. The only reason I hesitated on bringing in Meloetta was because I did see Pursuit on Scizor twice in my mocks. So I was kind of hesitant on uh, on bringing that in right away because his guard is still alive. So I'd rather force in his guard and get in my Meloetta for free instead. So I'm going to go for Clanging Scales here. He does end up staying in with his Zard. His Zard goes down. I get the defense drop because we're on regular showdown. Thank goodness. And he's going to bring in his Gardevoir. And uh, I'm going to go for Protect. He knows that I have Protect now. He knows that I want to scout it. So he's actually going to end up going for Trick Room and revealing that he's not choiced. Now, Trick Room tells me that he's probably not an offensive item. So I'm going to go into Meloetta. He's going to go for the Psychic. It only does 21%, so this is fine. Uh, I can just fire off a Hyper Voice right here as he goes for another Psychic. Psych! He's soundproof. Well then, <laughs> I messed that up. Uh, I ended up giving Como a soundproof to block uh, Gardevoir's ability to uh, to stop me from sludge bombing it with a Moongus, and I end up giving it a uh, an immunity to my Specsmon. 
So that was uh, that was kind of a blunder on my part. Uh, I gotta say, uh, I didn't even realize that he had traced soundproof, and I just clicked hyper voice. Uh, what I should have done was actually just clicked shadow ball, and it would have been a two hit KO on him, obviously, um, and that would have been awesome. But he's gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna switch out to uh, Como here because I'm obviously locked into uh, hyper voice, and if he happens to be calm mind, I'm kind of screwed. So I'm gonna go into uh, to Como as I think he's going to psychic, but he actually ends up going for Memento. As we mentioned in the team builder, we do know that Greg likes to bring Memento. So he goes for that, and he's going to bring in his Barbarical. Now, I know that unless Barbarical uh, Shell Smashes up twice, I'm fine because I still have the Como. I'm just not sure on the damage that I'm going to do with Clanging Scales because I don't know his spread. So I'm going to go for the first Clanging Scales. I end up being faster in Trick Room, which means that he's naturally faster than me, uh, which kind of scared me uh, at the time because I thought that he might actually be faster than my Coco, and then I looked at it again and I was like, no, there's no way. Uh, and I end up doing exactly 28% to him. What this means is that because he's at 60 and because there's one turn of Trick Room left, when he goes for Shell Smash, on the following turn... If he wants to Shell Smash again, he's faster than me, and he's going to drop his Spadef again. And what that would do is it would allow me to hit him for 56. Now, obviously, that could be a high roll, uh, but regardless of that, his defense is also dropping simultaneously. So no matter what happens, uh, if he Shell Smashes again and gets out of... Uh, basically makes himself faster than my Coco, he's leaving himself in range of Quick Attack from my Diggersby anyway. So I don't care. I'm just going to go for the Clang of Scales again. He's going to end up going for Aerial Ace. Good bring on his part, obviously, because it hits Amoongus as well as my Como. I'm going to let Como go down, and I'm going to go into my Scarfed Coco. I'm going to be able to click Wild Charge, and I'm going to bring this thing down pretty low. Now, I'm going to take some Recoil. Uh, he ends up going into Scizor. Uh, I calc it. I see that uh, Banded Bullet Punch, uh, I believe, is a roll from here, uh, but because of my investment, it's not. Uh, anyway, it's, re it's really close to, to knocking me out, but if he's Banded, that just makes things easier for me because I already know that his Lando is Scarfed. Another choice item is actually going to end up helping me. So I'm going to stay in, and I'm going to go for Wild Charge. As he decides to go for the Swords Dance, uh, and I'm going to stay. I'm not going to stay in, with my Coco because I see the end game and I see that I can lock myself into HP Ice and his uh, his Rotom is already toxic and it has to come in on rocks. Uh, so even if he switches around there, uh, he has to make some pretty big outplays to beat me. So I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go directly into Amoongus. I know that I'm not going to die to plus two bullet punch unless he crits me and he does not. Uh, he's going to take some Rocky Helmet and uh, he's got to take another Rocky Helmet hit if he wants to knock me out and that's exactly what's going to happen. We end up dealing with Scizor this time. It does not sweep us with bullet punch. Now, Right here, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to go into Arrow as he goes into Lando, just because I wanted him to have to lock himself into Stone Edge. The problem with this thought process was, uh, because of the range of health that my Diggersby is at, if he crits me on either one of the Stone Edges and both connect, uh, he actually knocks out my Diggersby. And I want to keep my arrow alive because it prevents him from spamming Earthquake in the late game, and I don't have to play mind games between uh, Wild Charge and HP Ice on Coco. So I'm going to switch out, and I'm going to go into my Diggersby, and I see the damage, and I see that he does exactly 23% uh, to me, and I'm at 33. So if he gets a crit right here, my Diggersby goes down, and then I have to go into something else to take a Stone Edge, uh, which is obviously Coco because it's Scarfed, but then... Coco uh, has to, it's another 50-50 again, uh, between whether he stays in uh, or if he goes into Rotom, because at this point I'm running low on ways to deal with Rotom. Obviously I could always just sack Arrow and then go into Meloetta and click Hyper Voice, he can't switch in, and then my Coco comes back in and clicks HP Ice, but it's still kind of shaky, so this is kind of a misplay, uh, but he goes for Stone Edge and he does not crit us, he does 26%, I go for the return, I knock out the Lando and now it's very easy so long as his Rotom is not Scarfed, which I don't believe that it is, carrying Will-O-Wisp and being the switch into uh, to Aer Aerodactyl, uh, I don't think that it would be Scarfed, uh, and even if it is, it has to lock itself into a Water move, which I don't think would end up knocking out Meloetta from where it was, uh, and he's going to go into his Rotom, he's going to take 13 from the rocks, I go for the return, I end up critting him, I think that mattered. Uh, because I think I do max like 51 to max defense, but ultimately differential doesn't matter in the playoffs and we end up taking round one of the playoffs, which I don't believe that I can say that I've ever done. <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys. I've been playing for two and a half years. Uh, for, uh, no, two years, uh, just past two years draft league format. And 
I have always, always, always been knocked out in the first round of playoffs every time that I've made it to playoffs. Every single time. In minors against Rob, uh, in D-League versus Leo, in the, uh, what else was I, in the GPC uh, against Trev, uh, and I made playoffs twice in the GPC. And I don't think I made it past the first round either time. Uh, I can't I can't remember who I lost to the first time, like in Season 5, uh, but I lost to somebody. Anyway, uh, every time that I've made playoffs in, uh, in a regular league, anything that's not a tour, obviously, a tournament, uh, I've always been knocked down in the first round of playoffs. So this is the first time, uh, not only the first time that I've uh, won uh, the first round of playoffs, but it's also the first time that I've beaten Greg. So GG to Greg. Thank goodness for that. We actually make it past the first round, and uh, we're going to end up playing the winner of Cheese Boy. Uh, is it 628? Probably. Uh, Cheese Boy and, uh, and Rob, or Rob Jr., who we have already taken down this season. Um, and I'm not sure who I want to play more, honestly, because um, Cheese has a very scary team, and we've already played Rob, and I know he's going to have some sick-ass tech for me. So <laughs> it's going to be tough uh, to beat either or, but uh, I, I have no idea what the result of their match is yet because it hasn't been played when I'm recording this. So we'll find out when we uh, when we get to next week. But uh, hopefully I'll keep you guys updated on Twitter, on, uh, on Discord. I know a lot of you guys uh, do have direct interaction with me on Discord. Uh, a lot of you that watch these videos. So if you want to know who I'm playing, just ask me and I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, I'm going to wait until the games go live, obviously sleep before uh, before letting you know but it'll probably be around the same time as uh, as mine come goes live so yeah that's it um that's uh that's pretty much it guys we advanced to a nine and two record not that the record matters anymore but we do get past the first round of playoffs we're moving on to semifinals which was my goal uh if it ends here then it ends here but i want to take it to finals i really really want to get to finals because i want a chance at gypsy uh, I know everybody wants a chance at Gypsy, but I truly want a chance at Gypsy. But that's if Gypsy even makes it, because uh, I do know the result of one other match, which is, uh, and I'll spoil it right here. If you don't want to get spoiled, then go and check them out. But uh, Maddie did beat Merc, so Maddie is the one who's going to end up playing Gypsy. And Maddie is arguably uh, top, I would say top three in the NPL. Uh, and top 10 pretty much everywhere in my opinion like he's a, a phenomenal player so if anybody can beat gypsy in the uh in the semis it's definitely him uh but he's but gypsy has yet to play uh chris uh by the time that i'm recording this so hopefully chris can take him down instead uh, you know I, i'd rather avoid having to play gypsy in finals but uh i actually do already have a team prepared for him so that should be interesting anyway guys uh, i know this is a longer video than usual a longer game but uh i really wanted to, to go into detail on everything uh, i haven't talked to you guys in a while either uh i haven't uploaded in a while and i haven't played a serious game like this one in a while either dallas and uh and Maddie in uh, week 9 and 10 weren't really super serious games, so I really wanted to, to take as much time as possible with this. So I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to leave a like down below. Let me know what you thought of the game. Uh, again, how you think we're, we're performing this season, what adjustments you think I could make, how you feel about the draft, everything anything, everything and anything in, in general. I love reading your guys' comments, uh, honestly, even though in the super long block text ones. Uh, shout outs uh, to you guys in the comments. You guys know who you are, Lagodier and stuff. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, again, make sure to hit that like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you haven't already, if this is your first time here. And I will catch you guys later. Ciao.